Hi guys. Happy Sunday. It's Claris and I have just um, started the video and I am just going to adjust my screen really quickly to make sure that everyone can see properly before I begin. So I'm just going to give a few seconds, minutes for people to kind of come in and as soon as I see the numbers increasing, I am going to start talking about uh, what we are doing today. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm also just really quickly making sure I, I can see um, this on my laptop so I can engage with you guys. And, uh, and here we go, people are rolling in. Hey, Patty. Hi, Mary. Hey, Shauna. Yep, we had uh, we had church live on TV today because we are in lockdown, um, and that was earlier on. Uh, okay, so I think we we got twenty people already. Hey, <laughs> Patty, yes, I know you were drawing the bird, and your cat thought I'm 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 pretty sure you did a pretty amazing job based on the image. The cat thought it was real and actually jumped on it. That was pretty funny. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Nita. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Artie. Okay, I think like quite a few of you are here. So I'm just going to start uh, doing my quick intro before we get into today's tutorial. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I have the calendar available for direct purchase right now. It was on pre-order, but I have a couple in. I've started mailing them out already, uh, and then I have a few left. So if you want yours on time for a Christmas gift, please be sure to visit the website and order yours now, or just send me a DM and I can tell you accordingly what's gonna happen. But it's uh, pretty much all the videos we have been doing. Actually, most of them are all aren't uh, throughout this uh, wonderful 2020. Um, and so you will find them in a calendar if you would like to have one. Uh, okay, putting that aside. And uh, I'm just going to quickly talk about what we did this week. I don't know if anyone has missed it. Uh, I think most of you have caught it because I've been getting amazing uh, links and tags to all your pretty artwork, which makes me so happy. Uh, but this was the snowman from earlier on this week it came out thursday and then this birdie came out uh on saturday so hope you guys got a chance to catch these if not just check it out on the channel uh later or when you have time and uh yeah give it a go if you like snowmen and birds and wreaths all right putting this aside as well and now i will tell you about what we are doing today so today we are doing snowflakes, but uh, there's a twist to the snowflakes. We are going to be creating snowflakes using everything we've learned thus far, or we've been painting thus far. So they're gonna be botanical inspired snowflakes. So I hope you're excited. I'm excited. Uh, I have brushes out and ready. Again, because it's gonna be something that requires detail, I have my number four. And I really do think for before the year is out, I'm going to get a number two brush as well. Not sure if I'm going to stick with the silver black velvet. I might uh, get it in the, uh, what you call it, the um, Princeton. Let's see. So number four in silver black velvet, number eight in Princeton. Uh, this is something I purchased when I was in North Carolina, and uh, I really like the brush. However, because it's quite large and my size of paper is smaller. I'm just gonna keep it handy on the side. Let's just see if we end up using it or not. And uh, let's see what else. I think that's it. I'll keep my silver black velvet in the eight as well because it's got a nice pointed tip uh, just in case I need to use it. If not, um, no big deal. So I'm keeping all these aside uh, if we need to use it. I'm just going to adjust my screen to make sure you're seeing more of my sheet as opposed to the equipment. I have my water ready. Uh, now because this is a snowflake and it requires a little bit of planning and spacing, uh, we will sketch it very roughly. My colors are going to be St. Petersburg and since it's going to be botanicals, we're going to be using 
the exact same colors we've been using for the past, I don't know, I think five videos. So that is the Carmen. Uh, I have my Umber, which is like a nice brownish green. Uh, then I have the green, which is like a nice deep dark green. Uh, St. Petersburg again. Uh, I'm going to keep the Mars Brown and the Sepia for my browns. And then uh, I'm going to have black on the side as well because I'd like to mix that in with the red to get like a darker shade of the red. And uh, I'm also going to keep the emerald on the side. I'm trying to venture out and use, be more adventurous and use other greens. So that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be my my efforts for today. So putting these aside, and I'm just going to quickly have a read at the comments and see uh, what people are saying before we begin. Um, oh, wow, Patty, you guys are going in lockdown too. Okay, interesting. San Diego, eh? Hi, Lisa. Oh, so you've already gone into lockdown, Patty. Okay, got it. One this morning. Hi, Cindy. Hey, Nancy. Thank you. Thanks, Brittany. Uh, pie dill. Oh, turnovers. Patty, that sounds amazing. I wish you, we had a screen for you so you could show us all the goodies you're baking. Right from uh, plucking them off the tree. Hi, Janet. Thanks, Mary. Okay, so I think everyone is now just having chit chat amongst themselves. Hi, Zanette. Welcome. And I'm just going to start. So uh, first things first, I did a very rough, rough sketch idea. I'm hoping it turns out way better than this, but do you remember the poinsettias I did earlier on? I just used the same sheet to kind of do a rough idea of what I would like to do for today. It looks simple enough, right? So I think everyone should be able to get along doing this and have fun and just create something fun. Um, so I might tweak it. I just wanted to have a visual idea of what that would entail before we did the live so that this was my attempt. All right, so I'm going to put that aside and we will start. So I'm going to use my pencil and I have my ruler or anything with a straight edge to kind of just draw in, uh, draw in the lines. Now where is mine? For some reason I can't, oh here it is, got it. So I'm just going to do a very quick sketch and I'm going to do one. Feel free to kind of go ahead and create lots more and using the same idea you can create other um, kinds of leaves and florals in it to kind of give it a different look and be creative and do your own. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by doing a cross and uh, let's just do, I'm going to use edge to edge so that it's fairly on point. And I'll just do a very rough line. It just gives me an idea of where I'm going to be doing these. This might be a little bit too wide, but that's okay. We are trying to do a pattern using the botanicals we've learned. I think that should be quite fun. So there's that. And now once we have the cross, we know exactly where our centers are. And then uh, we're just gonna do a line in the middle and this is where we'll have our fun uh, third elements, second elements happening. So here's another line and then um, we need some over here too. So I'm doing another line right smack dab in the middle. So this is why a little bit of planning will help because then you can space things out and you have a visual without doing a full-fledged sketch. Yeah, so this is good enough. We can start from here and then we can elaborate. So I want to leave a little bit of space from the center because we're not going to start directly from the center. If the leaves are going to be protruding sideways, we need some sort of space happening. So I would do, I don't have a perfect circle, but just do a rough a rough circle here so then you know not to start directly there and then we will start from above the circle or where the line is and 
Good, so we are good to go. Uh, so first things first, let's start off with doing our main our main cross um, uh, leaves. So I am going to use, I'm going to be adventurous and use this brush. Hopefully it doesn't backfire on me. And I will be using two brushes at the same time on the go. One to lay down the spine and then this one to kind of do the leaves on it. So let's begin. I For the spine, I am going to be using my Mars Brown. So I have the Mars Brown on the side and I'm just going to mix some of it. Let me see if I can show you this on screen without the uh, blurring factor happening. So here we go, just mixing some of the Mars Brown. I think I'm gonna just get a little bit of the sepia in and mix it in there. It's entirely optional to you. Uh, I'm just gonna try something new. You can follow me or not. It is your choice. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then with this brush, I think I'm going to do the umber. So getting some umber from here and I'm going to mix it on the side. I think it's a, the umber is a really nice muted green for a base coat and then you can go in with the uh, green. It's called green because that's nice and rich or you could even choose to mix the umber with the emerald and get like a nice pop of green as well. I just like the umber for a nice base muted green tone. So I'll be using that. So what I'll do is I'll get some of this and then just probably dip directly into the pan of the green and then lay my leaves on. All right, so I got these ready and now we are ready to begin. I will push those off screen so they are not needed okay so uh let's begin so we're gonna start off by doing and the the this is a loose style of painting guys so honestly it doesn't have to be so linear and straight edged please have fun and just go with the flow we're doing a very unconventional sort of snowflake so please go with it uh one thing we need to keep in mind is they need to sort of uh, be the same height around, right? Because it is a snowflake uh, or close to it at least. So I'm just doing the stem. I'm starting from right above there and I'm just gonna add a couple of strokes where I can add some leaves. This is like a guidance or a guide to me. And there we go. So now that I have that, I'm going to go in with this brush and I'm going to start creating my leaves. So I did say I would dip it into the green. So here we go. So here's one leaf. Um, you can try and get it from the outside in and then it gives you a nice blend or go from the inside out. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to kind of turn it around to get the outside in effect happening. And see, because this brush is thicker, it's giving me larger leaves. And if you want to go from large to small, that's a good idea as well. Or if you want to make these look like time, uh, that could work fine as well. So I gave some of them those uh, areas for twigs um, you can kind of have just I'm just gonna have one more because then I want to have some interceptions of um, berries so I'm gonna keep these open to this extent and let's see because I don't want to overfill the area now we're gonna move on and do it across on this side so here we go, doing the exact same thing that we did up there. And keeping it loose and simple and fun and easy. And lots of repetition with some pretty colors. So again, I'm doing my leaves from the outside in. 
Feel free to leave white space in between your leaves if you can. I didn't over there, but you might be able to, in which case I say just go for it. And then finally I have one at the very top. There we go. So we have that. I'm just going to do one more on this side here at the top. And if you want the leaves to be touching and have that nice blending effect of green, try that. And so we've done these two, let's do these two. And simple branches with simple leaves that we've kind of done several times together. And notice I'm just doing like three branches, well, more actually, but just to keep the even numbers happening to start off with. And then I kind of eyeball it and see if I need more. And now because I'm doing the outside in bit, I'm gonna turn it around and create my leaves this way. Here's another one. This one's slightly below the area that I created the branch in. I'm gonna try and see if I can make the leaves slightly smaller as I go higher. This is a thick brush. I did uh, challenge myself by picking this one. But this, I didn't wanna just continuously use the number four over and over again. I wanted to kind of change things up and do something different, so that's why I'm using this. I like to try new things, and this is me trying to step out of that comfort zone. So here we go, just adding a little bit of touch up here and there so we have a nice blend, and then we're on to our fourth area. So the fourth area, we're doing the exact same thing that we've done previously eyeballing it where we're ending so that it's like a semi decent circle if not perfect we're not looking for perfection anyways and then again I'm going to turn it around because I'm creating my leaves from outside in and I'm just going to mix a tad bit more of the color on the side there we go and yeah so let's do one here and for those who are just joining and are not sure why I'm using two brushes it's the whole idea of taking advantage of the fact that you've laid on color uh, and then using the whole concept of having it blend in with the brown and that is why I am using two brushes to save time And then this way I'm not wasting color by kind of getting some green, washing it off, using some brown, getting some green again. That can be a little bit annoying and a waste. And I don't like to waste. So there we go. Okay, so we've got this. We're not trying to keep things too, too even, but, you know, just keeping it uh, as realistic but loose at the same time as possible. So it doesn't have to be completely even. Just keeping my brush down here. Now we're gonna go on to the next thing. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the middle leaves. So I wanna get all the browns and the greens out of the way before we put down berries and florals if there is room for florals. And so for the middle one, let's use, let's try and do some um, pine leaves. Not quite sure how that will pan out. It might work, it might not, but let's give it a go. Um, I'm going to get some of the sepia and I'm just mixing that on the side. And it looks very close to the Mars Brown stuff that we've kind of done here. Um, but yes, I'm using my number four to get some of this and then 
do the um, strokes. So I'll put this sideways because these are still damp. Actually, let me find one that's fairly dry. I think it's this one. And I'm going to create my slightly above, not exactly around here, slightly above. I'm going to create my twig. So I'll do one like a line going straight up and then one going out this way and another going out this way. All right. Now once I have that, I'm going to use my number eight in the uh, silver black velvet. And that's mainly because it, it has a nice straight edge tip. And we will start off by using the umber. So I'm using just the umber and using just the tip. We're going to start creating these um, pine leaves. So let's start off by doing it on this one. So just straight lines. Try and use just the tip of your brush to get some nice fine. I'm just dipping some of the green that we have on here and getting some of that happening here. Leave a lot of white space in between or as much as you can. And if you're not able to do that right now, don't worry. There's always, you can always do this again and try it out. So over here, I'm doing it sideways or sorry, from the inside out. So I'm choosing to do the umber first because it's lighter. And then if I want to make it darker, I can always go back in. So just going back in with some of the brown to enhance the centers and give it a little more flair for color. So we have that. I think it's nice and delicate. We're kind of going to move on and create the same thing onto the next section. For that, let's do it. Let's do it directly over here. So again, I've left a little bit of space, like I made it higher. So I'm just going to do the same thing here. And I am eyeballing things, guys, because like I mentioned earlier, we are trying to make this not perfect, but close. Well, leaving that having that loose element to our paintings to keep things fun and realistic looking. So it doesn't have to be super perfect, but it would be nice to kind of have it similar to what we've done there. So we, I've done the stems for direction and now I'm going to go ahead and create my pine leaves. Just getting some water on the tip of my brush to kind of have a little more dampness to it so that it blends in nicely with the stem or the branch, whatever you want to call it. Getting mixtures of the greens. Trying to not make it too dark, but just give it a slight variation. Stick to the umber if that is easier for you. I don't want to confuse people, but I'm just trying to get, I like to have two variations at least in my leaves and we'll be coming back to add more anyways. So don't worry. So going back in with the number four, I'm just adding, re-emphasizing the center in hopes that it'll kind of flare out with the green. All right, so we've done it for these. Now we can do it on these sides as well. So continuing on with the exact same thing we've done there. Doing the same thing here. Now this has a thinner space, so be mindful of that. So doing the exact same thing that we've been doing.
using my number eight to get this in. And sorry, that's my phone buzzing. So you see how the space is kind of almost forcing me to have this be a lot more thinner and squished up. That's okay. Because like I was saying previously, we want it to be slightly more realistic, not realistic, but like loose without looking too perfect. And this is where things like that happen. So just keeping these things in mind, which is why I said, let's do a quick sketch so that we know uh, and we can catch ourselves in case we don't have too much area to, you know, go paint happy. Because I know I like to get paint happy. <laughs> Just like overdoing it. Yeah. So for the fourth and last time, we are creating these pine leaves onto our fourth area. And I'm doing it from the outside in. And then finally for the third one at the top. There we go. So we've got our sides happening and it's kind of coming along quite nicely. And then finally for our, for, um, what, so the final thing that we're going to be doing when it comes to leaves is we're going to be adding uh, adding some on either side of all, like in between. I'm trying to, words are failing me right now. And for that, I'm going to be using the number four. So just to keep things extra simple, we'll use the number four. And I will use the, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of the Mars Brown into this green that we've mixed to kind of get a lighter, slight variation of the green we've been using. And this is what that looks like. And so I'm watering it down quite a bit. And then once I have that watered down, here's what I'm going to be doing. So the first thing I'll be doing is adding a leaf that looks almost like um, is it holly? Yes, I think it is holly. So we're just going to go with holly for now. So I'm adding it in between these two and slightly upward. So it kind of closes up the circle. And I'm going to add one leaf here. And then another leaf here. And then finally one more here. So like, it's almost like three of them kind of coming out. And again, we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for loose and fun. So there's one. Uh, and we'll do the same thing on this end here. So again, I'm going to try and make sure it's as close as possible to what we have happening there. So we're repeating the same, the same kind of pattern all around. Leave white space if you can. If you cannot, that's totally okay. Uh, let's do them here. And they are slightly like midway up. So creating one leaf first down the center and then one kind of protruding from the side. And then another one here. Okay. 
And then our fourth side right here. I know for the perfectionist, this might be really hard to do because you might want to do it and then stand back and check to see if it's like on par or not. But try and let go of that because that can really ruin things for you and ruin the experience. So sometimes you just have to go with the flow and let the chips fall where it may. And you never know, you might just be surprised by the results. Uh, and trust me, because I am that person who's like, oh my gosh, this doesn't look good. I bet you I'm going to look at the screen right now and go, oh, that should have been a slightly more inward. <laughs> so I'm not going to look at my screen. Okay, so we have all of these areas done. Uh, for this area here, we're going to do something, but we're going to do it slightly different. Um, and for that, again, I'm going to use the number four. And I am just going to use some of the emerald, sorry, no, the green, and mix it in with this color that we just used. And let's see, we're, for this one here, we'll create it right in the middle of this pine. Okay, I need a little more color. So, Lots of greens here, guys. But I think once we put in the, the red, it'll be satisfying. All right, so here's one stem. Then we're doing another. And these can be more like, okay, they're getting too fat for me, the leaves, but I wanted them to be thin and more like a, uh, what's the word that I had used for these ones? Rosemary. So if you have a thinner brush as you're putting it down, just make sure you go thin on the on the leaves as you're laying them out. Like this one turned out a little too thick for me. And then I will do one here on this side. So let's try the thinness here. There's one. There's another, and here's another. And then I'm just adding some darkness to the stem. There we go. Okay, so we've got this down packed, and now we can kind of go ahead and do some of our berries and florals and whatnot. So for, uh, like I said, for my berries, I'm gonna be using the uh, Carmen, feel free to use the Matter Lake Red too, uh, any one of them. That's what that one looks like. So whatever your preference is, use go with that red. And so I'm gonna mix some of this and then I'm going to mix some of it with black for a um, slightly darker version of it. And the first thing we're gonna do is add some to the center. Actually, no, let's add it not to the center. We're gonna add it uh, onto the onto these areas here first. So I will have my number eight uh, handy because as I put the berries down, I want to try and connect some of them to the stem uh, of the, to the main stem. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try and get them to look cute. So using number four, I'm gonna create a couple of berries. And leaving some white space in there. And now taking the number eight and using just the tip, I'm gonna get some of the brown and I am going to go from the ins, sorry, from the stem to the berry. Like that. Now you don't have to do it as delicately or detailed a manner for all of them, but 
just a couple of them. Like I didn't connect that one on the top. I'm probably not going to connect this one at the very back either. But I just want there to look, I want that red with brown blend. And uh, that gives it that more loose look, you could say. And now these I'm just going to leave like fairly loose and open. Just adding a couple of dots here and there. And I'm going to add some here. We're going to rotate now and kind of carry on doing this all around. And they don't have to be exactly the same like I keep saying over and over again. You can have some happening at the top, some at the bottom. Getting some of my brown. And again, I'm connecting this one right here and maybe I'll do this one too, yep. And you can see the faint lines. All right, so now we're kind of going around to this end here. And we are doing the same thing. And I just need a little bit of water in to mix. So notice again, like leave the white space in between the berries if you can. That would be lovely. If you cannot, don't worry, they kind of look nice just kind of floating that way too. I keep putting the brush in the green for some reason. And that's okay if you are doing that too. There we go, so I think that's good. And then we have our final one to do. And the final connections. That one didn't really need to be connected, but that's okay. All right, okay, so we have our berries. And we can do, like I mentioned, we're going to do, we're going to mix some black with this pink just to get, or this red, just to get a tad bit more, um, like a variation of the red. So it could be like a darker tone. So I got more of a purple happening now, which I like, and it's still kind of with the colors of the season. And yes, yeah, someone I was saying, I just noticed this pop up, uh, lots of ideas for the center. Absolutely. You guys are on it before I even say it to you. That's exactly what I was thinking. You can absolutely do so many different things for the center. So um, you can either follow suit with what I am trying to do or by all means kind of go ahead and create your own little center with a poinsettia or anything really. Um, obviously holiday, Christmas related. And uh, yeah, so just gonna do these berries here quickly. And these ones, I'm gonna try and bunch them up a little bit more so they look hmm, 
Let's see, where should I do them? Uh, I'll do them on these because I did say these were like hollies. So I'll do them here. And it's so we have a nice pop of color again. These you could kind of paint in just so that they stand out, leave less white space in between so that they stand out more than the others. So just adding them to these little stems that we created with the leaves. And then just for, just to kind of make it look slightly different, I'm going to add the stems in this color itself. And it's not a whole lot, just like a few lines here and there. There we go. And then finally for the center. So yeah, like someone was saying, we can do a lot of different things for the center. Um, but before we get to the center, I want to do a couple of things with our green. Because we're going to go in and highlight um, so that certain things stand out more than others. So using my number four, I'm going to go ahead and get some of my favorite green because now I want to go in and highlight things. So first things first, we're going to highlight the these guys, these main stems here. So I'm just going to go over and add a flourish of green. Dipping the tip every now and then into water. Okay, we're going to do the greens that we have on here, the leaves that we have on here first. And going around. We need a nice dark green happening. This way it gives us gives us the nice two tone layering uh, happening with the green leaves. And now using the same green, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mute it down a lot more with water. And I want a very very light muted green, um, light in the sense when I put my brush to the page I want it to be almost like a transparent green but with the same color that we're using and let's go with the area we did first I think it was this one right here so I'm just going to do a couple of light wisps of green
So there's that. Uh, let's do this one next. Poking out from here and there. And these can be smaller in those, like at the top, so it doesn't, we don't lose that main green tip. So I'm going to make this slightly taller just because these kind of seem to be taller than it. Now going back in, we're just going to do the other few. These ones just very light because I don't want it to be taller than this leaf. And then possibly just one here. There we go. And again, we are going to do our last one on this side. So we have that and then the next thing is the pine cones, sorry, the pine leaves. So using the same green that we've mixed up, the dark, we're just going to go and highlight a couple of these using a thin brush. I'm using my number four. If you have a thinner one, feel free to use that. But we're giving this, um, we're giving these leaves some dimension. Not three dimension, obviously, but two dimensional because the color will make it pop just a tad bit. To this one so less talking because we're doing something quite repetitive and I think this is fairly easy to kind of go along with Yeah, so now we have all our sides that have happened. And finally, we can do the center. Um, so for the center, like I said, we could do a poinsettia. We could do, um, yeah, I think a poinsettia is the best idea because then it'll be like a nice, rich center. So for this, I am going to use the uh, Matter Lake Red. And we're going to start off with using the number eight Princeton. So just use any eight that you have. So I'm going to get the Matter Lake red and I'm going to mix some on here and just mix it off to the side. I should have muted my phone because it keeps making dinging noises. So I apologize for that. So getting some of this on here and if you've watched any of my four poinsettia videos, you know they're all pretty much like drawing leaves first. So I'm gonna get a nice base coat off this Matter Lake Red. And this should be a nice dark difference too compared to what we have on here. So let's do this. So it's with the number eight and we are going to start by just adding couple of leaf leaf like um, 
shapes right here. So I've done one there, I'll do one here, and I'm trying to add or leave some white space in between. And now I'm going to take my number four, and I'm just going to get a tad bit of the red on the tip of it, and I'm going to create additional leaves. And again, I'm trying to leave white space in between so that it's not fully closed up. And the leaves are uneven in shape, so feel free to not have them super um, close in shape. Let's have that little unevenness happening. And here's another leaf. right down there. So there we go. So we want this to dry up just a little bit before we go back in and add a second layer of leaves or petals right on top and it'll go around. And then we have that nice rich center. So I'm just gonna give it a few seconds to dry while I read your comments really, really, really quickly. Um, Let's see. Um, oh my gosh, so many different people from all over. Hi guys, welcome. Uh, for instance, Anne from Florida. I, I don't think I've ever read Anne before. Um, thanks, Zanette, glad you're enjoying this concept. I mean, take the concept, take the idea and create other florals within it. That's the whole, the idea was to spark some creative thought within you guys. Thanks, Patty. Uh, yes, I did mention, I think I saw Zanette's comment about having a snowman or a candle or different ideas within this. Hi, Shelly. Thank you so much. Hi, Valerie. And then we have someone in a different language and I don't understand. I'm really sorry. Hi. Hi, Lise. Oh, Samantha doesn't like it. Samantha, please feel free to hit the dislike button. Hi, Artie. Thank you. Hi, Paula. Thanks so much. Glad you like it. Um, Patty, any reason behind using a blunt tip? No reason. It's just me being lazy and I didn't uh, sharpen it. And it doesn't really matter in the sense because it's a rough drawing, so it will end up getting erased anyways. Um, thanks, Pamela, glad you like it. Hi, Trish Trisha from Ohio. Uh, Anne-Marie, thanks, Anne-Marie. Uh, hi, Yasmin, thank you. All right, so lovely, great comments. Ashana, you said it was blurry. I hope it's not blurry anymore because it's hard for me to kind of paint and then look at the screen at the same time. Um, but right before we kind of venture and do our final layer, let me just quickly find my eraser and try to erase uh, whatever I can without ruining areas that are still damp. I think the, that was it. That was all that needed erasing. There's more in the center, but I don't want to touch it right now. Okay, so finally we're going to do the second layer for the poinsettias, and then we are done. Okay, so um, we're going to use some of this. I always get, ap um, what's the word? Slightly nervous when I do this final one because it's like, you get one shot at it. <laughs> and poinsettias, while they are fun, they're also very, um, I'm adding a little bit of black to this. So you see how it's given me that nice, rich burgundy color compared to when I use the, um, the Carmen, it gave me more of a pink, uh, sorry, a purple. So this is the color we want. And this is the color All right, so we got this, and uh, so I have the color mixed up, and we are going to try and get a second layer of very similar looking uh, petals on here. 
So let's do one over here first, and it's going to be tinier. And I'm trying to be a little more concentrated and intentional in my strokes as opposed to super loose because it's a tiny space and I don't want to mess this up. So there's one, here's another. I'll make this also slightly tinier than the first one. Try and leave that white space in there, guys, if you can. And push all the color, like the dark color to the center. I think we might, I might just get this right this time, guys. Here's another one. And I think we can do, so there's three. I'll do like one really super small, tiny one here. And then fifth, because I like to do them in fives. Again, leaving white space. Trying to leave white space, guys. And here, this one can be slightly bigger than the rest. Or taller. There we go. Okay. Not too, too bad. Let's uh, do one more thing, which is adding some detail to the back end one. So using my number four, I am going to take a tad amount of the dark color we've mixed and I'm just going to add some veins to it. And this just kind of enhances the looseness, I guess. All right, and so we've done that. I'm just adding a little bit more color to the center. And then there we go. And if you want to kind of go ahead and add some very faint peaking off to the side, um, no, peeking le mm, petals to the side because sometimes they can be pretty voluptuous and thick, layered. You can add some like that. And this way it's not interfering in a very aggressive manner with the rest of the design. We're just, we're just kind of peeking from there. Just adding this darker color here to this one because I felt like it was a little bit uneven. All right, okay, so Here's what we have. And then lastly, if you feel like the centers are too, well, it is like a snowflake, but it kind of reminds me a lot of the, the other Christmas ornament that we did, to be very honest. So I'm just going to finish touching it up by adding a couple of strokes. Just like this on the side to enhance the design because snowflakes have those little... Okay, just put these off to the side. Now these don't have space too much. And then finally here. All right, great. So this is what I came up with, guys. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you thought. 
I think it's okay, but I would probably give it another go and try a little bit more spacing out, especially with these guys in the center here. But for the most part, it's pretty. I think if we did a re repetitive pattern of this for a Christmas card or, I don't know, like maybe plate settings or something, I think it would work quite well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this fun time. Uh, let me know... Um, in the comments what you guys thought share it uh, like it if you do obviously share it in your social media circles and most of all send me your work i want to see how it turned out for you guys because some of you are amazing and it looks even better than mine so i'm just gonna give the comments one quick read before i say bye and wish you guys a good sunday so uh we have uh, where did I last leave off? Yasmin. Thanks, Yasmin. Thanks, Ruth. Thanks, Ginger. Yeah, the whole point of this uh, video was to give you guys an idea so you can run with it. You can either do what I have, enhance it by doing something else, add more Christmassy looking items or holiday items to it, and create your own snowflake um, pieces. Uh, Laura, I know what you mean about the being awful at poinsettias. I feel like while I like doing them, they're always like a hit or miss for me. Um, yes, Laura, I have increased, uh, noticed the increase in price for the cancel, uh, for the cancel paper. And I thought maybe it was just Amazon because I haven't checked local, uh, places to see uh, what it was like. But I do remember seeing, yep, the five ninety seven dollars price. Um, I think it was like two months ago. Uh, that's for the States only because in Canada here, it is like 30 bucks. Um, uh, Anne says, I watch your YouTube on my TV to see better. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. That's really cute. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Karen. Glad you like it. Uh, Nancy, you can send the work to uh, just send it via email or direct message on Facebook or Instagram. I love seeing what you guys come up with. So, yeah. Thanks, Patty. OK. All right. Great. I think that's it. No one has any questions or any other comments. So thanks again, guys. I love uh, this time that you take to spend with me. I really, really appreciate it. So have a lovely Sunday and I will see you guys on Instagram or I'll see you back here next Sunday. Bye guys.